Here we have two AMD Ryzen CPUs that came in for repair. I got them right here, and each one of them came from a different customer. If we read what the first customer wrote, ticket number ending in 71, and I have the CPU marked with 71 here, so we do not confuse both. He wrote broken CPU pins, resolder. And the second one, he wrote bent pins and pins missing. So God knows what we're going to find when we look at the pins. Let's take a look. I got this one here labeled with O2. And those are the last two digits of the ticket number. And that's the Ryzen 9 5900X. And right off the bat, I see four bent pins. One, two, three, four. We have bent pins over here. This one needs to be straightened out as well. We have a bent one here. And I see three broken ones. One, two, and three. And those are right in the middle. So it's going to take some precision work to solder those pins. Anything else?
Bummer. Bummer. I just realized that we do not have audio. The battery on my transmitter died and I'm so focused into the work I did not realize that audio was not recording. I'm using the Sennheiser transmitter receiver and I think they should have some type of mechanism where the transmitter beeps or the receiver beeps when battery is low or maybe OBS. They should have a function where if audio is not being recorded, it should alert you. I think that's very important because it always happens. I'm focused in my work and the battery suddenly dies in my transmitter or receiver and we end up with no audio. Batteries in a transmitter or receiver last about three, four hours. So if I'm doing a session, maybe one hour session, one and a half hour session, two or three times, it's gone. Or maybe two times, it's gone. I always have recharged batteries right next to me. That's not a problem, but I just need to realize that audio is not there so I can change the batteries. Anyway, what can you do? So right now, I already finished CPU number one. We had a couple of bent pins and one missing pin. I soldered a pin to CPU number one. Everything's good. And I started working on CPU number two. And I straightened all the middle pins, all the side pins. And all is left to do is to solder the missing pins in the middle. Let me focus so you can see what I'm talking about. I think we have four broken pins. So we have one, two, three, and one pin broke when I tried to straighten it because it was so badly bent. Where is it? One, two, three, and where is the fourth one? Right there, four pins. Right now, soldering pins in the middle, like this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, is not considered an easy job. It takes a lot of precision work, and we have to make sure that our soldering iron tip does not touch any of the neighboring pins. Otherwise, we're going to apply solder to those pins, and good luck cleaning out the solder. So let's see how we're going to do this. The nice thing is we do have some room under this broken pin. And we do have some room right here. Maybe if we tilt the CPU like this, we do have room under that broken pin. And we do have room under that broken pin. So we are somehow lucky. And I did mention when we lost audio that I'm using a combination of a double-headed prying tool and a knife blade. And you can buy both from our site. This one, I believe, is blade number one. If you log into our site and you type blade, we have seven different types of blades. And this one here, I love it because the blade head is small. It goes in in between the pins. And you can easily use it to straighten the pins. And you can use this pry tool. You see how it has an edge on the top, like a 90 degree edge. You can straighten pins that way, like this. Or you can even go like this if you want a longer reach. You can also use the yellow one here if you want a longer reach. So right here, if you search for double-headed multifunction prying knife tool, or if you search for pry, or prying, or knife, you will come across this one here. The item comes with five pieces, different shape heads, dual heads, top and bottom, and those are multifunctional. You can use them for any purpose. And the blade I'm using is this one here. Blade number, not number two, blade number one. I'm using the tiny head on the blade and that head is perfect for straightening pins on CPUs. You have blade number two which is a blade from the inside. You have a bigger blade, blade number four. Blade number six is a pointy blade. You have six different types of blades. And while we are on the website I just want to quickly mention that we do have an affiliate program. A lot of viewers keep asking do you have any type of an affiliate program so that we can share your link when somebody clicks on the link and makes a purchase, we can get paid a commission. We've had this affiliate program running for the past eight months, and a lot of you are already affiliates, and a lot of you are already generating a lot of income. Today, we have 27 referrals, 27 orders from different affiliates, and all you have to do is sign up to our website, have an account on our website. You can then go to your dashboard and click on become an affiliate, and you will automatically become an affiliate. You can then generate a link, share it on your social media, on your website. As long as you do not spam that link, you should be okay. You will start with 5% commission. 
if you reach a certain threshold, your account will be upgraded to 7% commission. And if you achieve another threshold, your account will be upgraded to 10% commission. When I say threshold, I mean how much money you are generating. If you are generating $20,000 in sales, for example, your account will automatically upgrade to 7% commission. If you are generating over $50,000 in sales, then your account will be upgraded to 10% commission. So let's say somebody purchased a microscope for $700, 5% commission is $35, 10% commission is $70. We get a lot of orders every day and you could be making a lot of money off our site. A lot of the items that we sell have 15%, 20%, 30% profit. So we can share that profit with you when you share the links. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and continue working on this CPU. We're gonna have to solder four pins and then we can call it off for this video. We already fixed one CPU and now we have to fix this one. And right now, if you look here, we have three missing pins. The area is tight, but it's doable. I mean, it's doable if you are using the right tip. If you are using a tip that looks like this, then of course it's not doable. Right now, the base of the pins are broken. So we need to get rid of that base, one, two, and three. And we want to only have the silver ring that you see under the base. So right now, we cannot just thin those pads because we have the base that is soldered on on top of the pads. We need to get rid of that base first and then we can apply solder to the pads and solder new pins. Let me check my weather tip. Will that work? Possibly yes, we have enough room. What about the NF.mini pen? I have the knife tip and the knife tip will work as well. Let's apply some flux in the middle. I mean, look at that flux needle. Look at how big that needle is. The needle is actually not big. It's a 20 gauge, very tiny, but those pins are microscopic. A lot of you ask that I compare whatever I'm working on to maybe a penny or quarter or dime. I do have a penny right next to me. And maybe if you want to compare the size of the pin with a penny, it's unbelievably small. It's not the smallest I've worked with, Size 1005 components is smaller and likely size 201 components are smaller, but those pins, I can tell you they are microscopic. And if you want to compare maybe the size of the pin, the width on that pin, it equals the eye in, in God we trust on a penny. See this eye? That's the size of the pin on the CPU. Or maybe one pin will equal one edge on the side of the coin. You know how the quarter has edges? One pin will equal one edge on the coin. So that's how tiny those pins are. Right now, we do not have any room for mistakes. No room to shake your hand. Just take a deep breath and do it. So that's one. We have this one here, two, and we have, what else? We have this guy right here, let's rotate. Do not do anything crazy. And patience. Gone, gone with the wind. And just look at how nicely solder sticks onto the tip of the NF.mini pen. Look at this. That's one good tip. When we started carrying the NF.mini pen, we had to go through a lot of tips. And we came to the conclusion that the tips that are now offered with the NF.mini pen are one of the best tips in the market. Just look at how solder sticks onto the tip. A lot of viewers ask, why does solder not stick onto my soldering iron tip? Two reasons. Reason number one, maybe your tip is too old and it's time that you changed it. Or reason number two, if the tip is new and it's not holding solder after two days, it means you have a cheap tip. I've been using this very same tip for the past, I would say five months, 
and the tip is amazing. It's better than my Weller station. The NF dot MIDI pen itself is 30% of the equation. The other 70% is the tip, what tip you are using. So we applied solder onto those pads. And now it's time that we grabbed a pin from the donor CPU. And we just have one more to go. Actually, two more to go. One here and one elsewhere. We're going to have to check that later, but let's finish with this one here. I think it would have been smarter to put this pin here first and then put this one. Well, what can you do? Microscope is not in focus. I do not have three hands. I'm grabbing the tweezer with one hand and the hot air station with the other hand. And the microscope is already focused on the customer's CPU because the height of the CPUs are different. And we're good. Like I mentioned before, I do not know if I mentioned it while the microphone was on or off, but I did mention that there's room to play. The pin does not have to be 90 degrees. It could be 85 degrees and the pin will still fit inside the socket. And one more pin. Where is it? Right there. The guy is hiding. You can run, but you cannot hide. That's what my mother used to tell me when I was a kid, when I was being a bad boy. She would take her slipper off and throw it at me. And she hits target every time. It does not matter if I'm hiding behind the couch or behind the table. That slipper would hit target. The slipper would make a 90 degree turn and hit target like a boomerang. That's how good she was. Of course, it was not child abuse, but that's the way things were done in my country. It's either the slipper or the wooden spoon. You choose. We're going to keep the solder that's already on the board by the factory. Let's grab a pin from the donor board. Right. And we're good. Perfect. Maybe we can press down on the pin on the base. Just for extra security. Perfect. We did such an amazing job. And we are done. We fixed two CPUs for two different customers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.